Narcissists have an uncanny knack for playing the victim, expertly spinning webs of deceit to portray themselves as the hapless targets of others' unfair treatment. This may seem contradictory, considering narcissists are often thought of as grandiose, self-centered individuals who believe they're superior to others. Yet, they can skillfully switch roles, donning the cloak of victimhood whenever it suits their agenda. This isn't about genuine suffering or seeking support. No, it's a calculated move, a form of manipulation designed to control others, shift blame, and elicit sympathy. It's a way for them to maintain their sense of superiority while sidestepping any accountability for their actions. Beneath the surface of their self-importance lies a master manipulator who can turn the tables and make you the villain in their self-authored tragedy. In this video, we will uncover 10 real-life examples of how narcissists play the victim card. First up is the Woe Is Me Master. This character is a maestro of misery, a virtuoso of victimhood. They're the ones who always seem to be struck by life's harshest blows, the ones who can't catch a break, the ones who are constantly complaining about their misfortunes. But here's the twist. These misfortunes are often exaggerated or even entirely fabricated. Their life is a constant soap opera of bad luck and unfair treatment. At least that's the narrative they spin. They paint themselves as the perpetual target of life's injustices. But why? It's simple. By portraying themselves as victims, they manipulate the sympathies of those around them, gaining attention, control, and even resources. They use their tales of woe to emotionally blackmail others into providing what they want. Remember, the Woe Is Me Master uses their tales of woe to garner sympathy and manipulate others. Next, meet the persecuted martyr. This is the narcissist who's mastered the art of historical revisionism. They have a knack for revisiting past conflicts and adding their own creative twists, painting themselves as the innocent victims. They recount tales of being wronged, of enduring unfair treatment, all the while conveniently forgetting their own role in the drama. They are the stars of their own tragic play where they are constantly under attack while they are just trying to live their life. This portrayal is not just for others, but they often convince themselves of their own narrative, truly believing in their victimhood. It's a clever strategy, because who would question the authenticity of a victim? This way, they successfully shift the blame onto others, never having to take responsibility for their actions. The persecuted martyr effectively erases their own contributions to conflicts, shifting the blame onto others. Now let's explore the misunderstood genius. This narcissist is a master of illusion. They paint a picture of themselves as a misunderstood prodigy, an unrecognized genius held back by the world. They craft narratives of being ahead of their time, too brilliant for the average mind to comprehend. They bemoan the fact that their ideas, their inventions, their insights are unappreciated, overlooked or stolen by less intelligent individuals. Their tales of woe are not about bad luck or misfortune, but about a world that simply cannot appreciate their brilliance. However, beneath this grandiose self-image often lies a different reality. They use their supposed genius as a shield to deflect criticism, as a weapon to belittle others, and as a tool to demand special treatment. They expect constant admiration and become irritable or angry when they don't receive it. The misunderstood genius uses their supposed brilliance as a tool to manipulate others and deflect blame. Next up, the selective truth spinner. This crafty character is a master of manipulation, bending reality to suit their narrative. They have a knack for omitting crucial details or twisting facts, painting a picture of themselves as the innocent victim. Picture this, they're at the center of a conflict. Maybe they've upset a friend with a careless comment. Instead of owning up to their words, the selective truth spinner will tell a different story. They might say, I was just joking, but she took it personally. Or perhaps, I only pointed out the truth, but she couldn't handle it. The crucial details of their hurtful comment are conveniently left out, making them appear as the innocent party, misunderstood and unfairly treated. This way, they successfully shift the blame onto the other person, reinforcing their victim narrative. The selective truth spinner manipulates reality to make themselves appear as the innocent victim. 
Now let's delve into the social media sob story. This is the narcissist who turns to the vast digital playground of social media to weave their tales of woe. With a captive audience that spans across continents, they skillfully curate posts and status updates, each one a carefully constructed narrative of their supposed hardships. These social media sob stories exploit the online platforms to their advantage, painting vivid pictures of their trials and tribulations. They create dramatic posts, peppered with exaggerated or even fabricated tales of misfortune. Their aim? To fish for sympathy and validation from their followers. The comments section becomes a stage for their performance, each sympathetic emoji and comforting comment feeding their need for attention and affirmation. But remember, this is not a genuine cry for help. It's a calculated move to manipulate their audience, to control the narrative and portray themselves as the victim. The social media sob story uses the power of social media to manipulate their audience and garner sympathy. Meet the medical manipulator. This character is a master at playing the sympathy card. They're always suffering from some ailment or another. Sometimes they might even invent an illness or exaggerate a minor health issue. Why? They do this to gain attention, control or special treatment. Imagine a person who always seems to have a new health scare just when they're not the center of attention. Or someone who insists they're severely allergic to common foods, demanding everyone cater to their needs. These are classic moves of the medical manipulator, but remember they're not just seeking attention, they're using their supposed health problems to manipulate others. They're leveraging the natural human response of concern and sympathy to control the narrative, shift focus onto themselves, and dictate the actions of those around them. The medical manipulator uses supposed health issues as a tool to control and manipulate others. Next up, the financial fabrication. This is a narcissist who skillfully plays the role of a financial victim. They're always seemingly at the mercy of a cruel world, facing one financial disaster after another. But if you look closely, you'll see a pattern. They always shift the blame onto others. It could be an ex-partner who supposedly drained their bank account, a family member who ostensibly squandered their inheritance, or an employer who allegedly cheated them out of a promotion. Yet, they rarely take responsibility for their own financial decisions or acknowledge their role in the predicament. Instead, they use their supposed financial struggles as a tool to garner sympathy and manipulate those around them. They may even use these fictitious financial woes as a way to control relationships, obliging others to step in and provide financial support. In this way, they maintain their victim status while also reaping the benefits of others' generosity and concern. The financial fabrication uses their supposed financial struggles as a means to manipulate and control. Now let's explore the emotional blackmailer. This is a master manipulator who exploits your inherent empathy and compassion to their advantage. Their favorite tactic, claiming that their distress, their sadness, their rage, is all because of you. They make you feel like you're the puppeteer of their emotions, indirectly controlling their happiness and sadness. The emotional blackmailer can make you feel like you're walking on eggshells, always anxious about triggering their next emotional meltdown. You might find yourself constantly apologizing, even when you know you've done nothing wrong, just to keep the peace. They keep you in a perpetual state of guilt, making you doubt your own actions and intentions. The truth is you're not responsible for their emotional well-being. They are. It's their way of shifting blame and avoiding accountability. The emotional blackmailer uses your empathy against you, manipulating you into feeling responsible for their emotional state. Next, meet the false flag flyer. This master of manipulation is adept at provoking minor conflicts or intentionally sabotaging situations, only to emerge as the seemingly innocent victim. The false flag flyer is not above creating discord or stirring the pot knowing full well that they can retreat into the comfortable role of the wronged party when things get heated. Imagine a chess player, but instead of aiming for checkmate, their goal is to upset the board and then blame you for the scattered pieces. They might start a heated argument over a trivial matter, then act hurt and surprised when you defend yourself. 
Or perhaps they'll sabotage a project you're both working on, then watch as you scramble to fix it, all the while bemoaning how they're being blamed for something that is not their fault. The false flag flyer turns the tables, making you appear as the aggressor while they play the victim. Finally, let's look at the poor me party crasher. This is a particularly cunning breed of narcissist. They have a knack for turning any celebration or achievement into a stage for their own drama. Birthdays, weddings, promotions, or even a friend's new purchase can become an opportunity for them to refocus the spotlight onto their perceived misfortunes. The poor me party crasher subtly undermines the celebratory atmosphere with comments like, I wish I could be as happy as you, but I'm just dealing with so much right now. Or they might downplay the achievement, saying something like, that's great for you. I wish I could have nice things, but I'm always getting the short end of the stick. It's a manipulative tactic that plays on the sympathies of those present. It's their way of shifting focus from the person or event being celebrated back to themselves. The poor me party crasher uses others' achievements as opportunities to refocus attention on themselves and their perceived misfortunes. Recognizing these examples of narcissistic victimhood is crucial in understanding and dealing with narcissists. As we've journeyed through the 10 real life examples, we've seen how narcissists can expertly spin a web of victimhood from the woe is me master to the poor me party crasher. They skillfully manipulate emotions, twist truths and exploit empathy to maintain control and shift blame away from themselves. Whether it's through constant complaints, twisting past conflicts, or exploiting social media platforms, these individuals have mastered the art of playing the victim. They provoke minor conflicts, fabricate financial woes, and even hijack others' celebrations, all with the aim of garnering sympathy and attention. But remember, you are not obligated to be a part of their manipulation. Prioritize your own emotional well-being and set clear boundaries. Remember, you deserve support and compassion, but not from someone who uses victimhood as a weapon. If you suspect you're dealing with a narcissist, seek professional guidance to protect your emotional well-being.